Hey everyone, this is Jack G and these are my hobbies. Hope everybody's doing well during these challenging times. I have a beautiful knife here that I'm excited to talk to you about. This is the Quiet Carry Waypoint. It is from a, I call them a boutique knife company in Costa Mesa. They don't make a lot of knives. They sell out really quick, so you kind of have to get them pretty, pretty quickly when they do come up. Uh, this is from their Elements or Everyday Salt series. Um, just to give you a quick look, and then we're going to jump into the seven C's of my criteria that I go through when I go to purchase a knife. But just to give you a quick look around of this knife, I'm kind of changing my lighting here, so hopefully this is going to turn out all right for you all. Anyway, I'm going to jump into the first C, which is comparison. And when I go to compare knives um, that I'm looking to buy, I compare them to what I have in my collection and will they complement um, other knives that I have or frankly other knives that I'm looking for and that kind of brings me to uh, this first comparison here. This is the Spyderco Native 5 Salt and if you've seen some of the Blade HQ um, tests that they've done with this and particularly this uh, knife steel, the LC200N steel and the um, Spidey Chef, they put it in like the great salt lake and um, it's super corrosion resistant steel and it holds an edge really well. In fact, um, when we get to the knife uh, blade, we'll, we'll talk about the differences between these two. But I had this and this is my, goes on my go bag and uh, because it's corrosion resistant, um, you know, it's the first thing I would take out and put in my pocket rather in an EDC environment when it's just pouring rain around here. So I was looking for another one to kind of complement this uh, knife as well. So that's why I, I have these two out here. Size-wise, you can kind of see the, the size between all these knives. This is a small Sabenza um, in Singo, and you've probably seen that in my other videos. Uh, this is the Benchmade, uh, which is the bug out. You can see it's really close to the size, same size, almost exactly the same kind of size, both in terms of you know the drop point blade, although they call this a drop slash clip point, we'll get to that. Uh, but very close in size to, to, to this knife. Um, I'll give you some quick specs on this. I don't usually do this because you can look them up, but I think it's really interesting. The blade length is 3.31 inches. The blade thickness is 0 0.09 inches, and we'll compare that here to what probably uh, something comparable would be um, the bug out, both in terms of the blade stock. They're pretty, pretty darn close, to be honest. Uh, a little bit more thickness here towards the edge compared to the Benchmade. Um, also, um, notice that this is um, uh, stonewash. Um, I got this from Knives Plus, and the scales here are aluminum from AWT that I put on afterwards, and uh, Knives Plus also um, has the titanium screws that I put on here that I really think look nice. But in any event, um, you can get various versions of this blade. This is the stone wash blade, uh, as well as the stone wash handles here. Um, and I think they did a beautiful job with that. Okay, so some other comparisons, just to other things uh, we have on the board. The reason I brought these out as well is I consider these, including obviously the Benchmade, um, some of the best EDCs that I've come across over the years. And so, you know, arguably this ticks off just a lot of boxes. I mean, you can compare it in many Sorry about that. Compare it in many different dimensions to all of these knives. And one of the co comparisons I want to compare to is cost. So this Benchmade, you know, obviously I've customized it a bit uh, with a green uh, anodized uh, hardware. But this is a S90V uh, steel. Put a deep pocket clip on it because I like that, right? The carbon fiber, uh, this is the 940-1. This ran about, when I bought it, maybe $275. Um, the Quiet Carry runs $295, so I think you're getting a lot for your money. Not inexpensive, obviously, but if you compare it to, say, the Sabenza, the small Sabenza here, it's very comparable, um, maybe a little bit longer in, in the blade handle. In fact, let's just show you, kind of, I have medium-sized glove hands. Uh, fits extremely well in hand. I really like how this feels. A um, little bit of jimping here. I don't want to get into too many details yet, but uh, a little bit bigger. I like that it's a little bit bigger than the small Sabenza. The small Sabenza, if you were comparing it to, say, the plain small Sabenza, it would run, uh, let me think, 
375, I believe, is what the small Sabenza plane runs, the 21 and the 31, uh, versus like the large Sabenza that I've shown here, which runs about 450. So for about 375 versus 295, uh, if I had a choice between these two, well, that is a really tough call. And right now, believe it or not, the quiet carry is kind of uh, leading for me. And I'll explain why as we get through all of the uh, various things that uh, I like about it. And in fact, this is uh, for the small Sabenza that my daughter got me because I had planned on buying one. She got me this for Christmas. And just in case you care, um, this is a nice, you know, so I don't get a lot of snail trails and stuff like this when I'm carrying it in the office, if I ever get back to the office after this pandemic. Um, but it fits perfectly well in here. So if you're looking for a nice leather sleeve for this uh, quiet carry waypoint, it's uh, pretty much perfect, really. And I'll probably use this Chris Reeves leather case for my waypoint instead of a small cement. Just saying, I'm really liking this one. Okay, so notice that it flies out pretty readily. Um, I'm gonna move these aside. Uh, obviously, the bug out is, is less expensive. I think the, I forget what the bug outs run now, but the, just on price wise, the uh, Native 5 Salt um, or the Spidey Chef, I think they're running around, I don't know, maybe it's maybe it's the Spidey Chef's around 234-ish or something. So, you know, it's a little less expensive. Um, I wish I had a Spidey Chef to show you comparisons right now. And this is the uh, Ontario Rat 2, just to show you, and um, this will be coming up my next, um, final episode of one of my giveaways, comparing up uh, of all things, um, the Sabenza to budget knives. But just to give you an idea, comparatively in size to the Ontario Rat 2, very close actually, like extremely close. Um, this is pretty thin in hand though. In fact, let's see, what's a good one to compare it to? How about, um, yeah, I mean, these are new scales that I put on this, this bug out which is the Putnam carbon, or um, yeah, carbon, or G10, sorry, my bad. Um, but you can see thickness-wise, it's pretty, let's see if I can get a better job of this, pretty darn close um, to that. Okay, and comparatively to, pretty darn close actually to the 940, actually almost exactly, interesting. Uh, but so very thin in hand, if you're familiar with these knives. Okay, I'm gonna move some of these away and then let's go to the next C, which is cost. Oh, actually, I already talked about cost a little bit. Uh, so what, 275 for this one. Um, the small Sabenza uh, was at 350. So, you know, you're gonna pay more for the Sabenza. Um, and obviously the Rat 2 is much less expensive. So I don't need to talk about that. So that's it for the cost. But really when we talk about uh, C for cost, I really wanna talk about uh, value and quality. Uh, the construction on this is quite impressive. Uh, I don't know who makes their knives for for them. Um, I think, um, I don't know if they make them down in Costa Mesa. Nobody really knows. Um, but in any event, quality construction, no blade play, everything solid lockup. Uh, really impressed with that. A nice little backspacer here kind of lends stability. But man, is it, it's, it's, you know, built like a tank. The lockup on it is is quite good. Um, you can listen to this, hear that? I mean, it really locks up quite good, quite well, uh, rather. Um, it is completely corrosion resistant, and in fact, probably would hold up better than the test that Blade HQ did on the Spidey Chef, and they put it in the uh, Great Salt Lake um, for about three weeks, and the only corrosion that the Spidey Chef had was in some of the, the hardware, not the blade itself. So this blade here, uh, that did not corrode is LC200N. Uh, LC200N uh, holds an edge really well. It's corrosion resistance, uh, resistant. And the uh, liner lock here is LC200N. They also have a ceramic lock ball as well, similar to what Sabenza does. So super high quality, really. Um, I really am quite impressed. Um, the screws, the inset of the screws, they're all marine grade. Uh, stainless steel, which I'm going to talk about a little bit here in a minute, um, but extremely corrosion resistant, um, quite impressive. So cost uh, and value for the money, $295 for the solid knife, um, in my opinion, is well worth the money. Um, super happy with the money that I spent. So the next thing on my C's, 
after comparison cost is coolness and uh, does it bring me joy like my leather jacket and I think this thing is super cool I really like the look of this knife um, it's plain but the lines are super clean um, I, I really think it's super cool uh, okay so the next C is customize or can you get this in Various, you know, flavors, versions. Yes, you can. This one, I believe, comes in maybe five-ish, I think, versions. Uh, they're very hard to get. There's like a, a black uh, version of this, the coated black. This one is the SWSW, so it's stonewash. Hopefully this will come off really well. It's actually quite beautiful. Uh, stonewash handles uh, and stonewash blade is this version. Um, I don't know what else I would want to customize on this, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I love the, the pocket clip. We'll get to that when we get to EDC. But there's nothing much else that I'd want to do with this. I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe anodize the, the scales or have somebody do somebody better than me. But I can't think of much that I'd want to do to customize this. So um, anyway, that's it on customization. So cut, which I really want to talk about on this knife, around blade steel, the shape of the blade, etc., this blade steel is what they call Vanex uh, Super Clean. And I actually searched the internets and I could only find one other knife, production knife, that is in Vanex. And it is the, um, what was it? It was the Shur Shurigorov. I'm probably going to do a terrible job pronouncing that, which is, you know, pretty high end knife. Uh, it is the only other Vanex or Vanex 37, they call it. Um, steel, which is super corrosion resistant. Um, they basically replace the carbon with um, nitrogen is how they um, get the corrosion resistance. It holds an edge extremely well. In fact, you can see it says Vanex here, uh, the Vanex 37. The Shurigarov uh, sells for like $1,000. So this is the only production knife that I know other than that uh, Shurigarov. Um, especially at this price point that you can get, uh, I believe Ada, Ada something, I, I'm drawing a blank on his name, uh, British guy, uh, does a really good job of talking about blade steels and so on, um, uh, talks about the edge retention and, and a number of other things, uh, about, um, the Vanex, and it holds up extremely well. In fact, I think it did better than like M390, uh, better than, you know, LC200N, which, you know, is obviously uh, this corrosion resistant blades. Um, I'm loving this. This thing is razor sharp out of the box. It's quite impressive. Uh, the blade, they call it a drop slash clip point. So it's kind of a drop point. Um, has a little, a little bit of a hollow grind here. Uh, pretty thin behind the edge, really. And it is razor sharp. I mean, I, <laughs> pass the paper cutting test uh, quite well. Uh, what else do I want to talk about that? Um, so many things to talk about this beautiful uh, uh, steel here. I mean, you just, you're not going to worry about it at all, you know, getting uh, rust at all. In fact, uh, just to give you an idea, let's go to the next C, which is carry an EDC in the pocket. So it's 2.7 ounces, so it is, it is quite light. It's very thin in, uh, in the pocket. And as you know, I love a very low profile um, deep carry pocket clip. And just to give you an idea here, um, with the screws inset, I mean, look at that. It just like slides in and out of the pocket with no problem, has great retention. Uh, I had to send back the kite fin knife that I had uh, because it was shredding my pocket with the, um, uh, the relief cut here. Uh, that I talked about in my last uh, maybe a couple videos ago now, but this thing just slides in and out. I mean, look at that with the inset screws. Um, speaking of corrosion resistance, all uh, so this is uh, titanium thumb studs. One thing that I wish on the carry side or customization side, I wish they would allow you to unscrew these or replace them. I, I mean, they're great thumb studs, don't get me wrong. So I probably would never want to replace them, uh, but you can't replace them. They're not uh, screwed in. I mean, I mean, I'm sure you probably could could find a way to, to remove those. On the corrosion resistance. So this is marine grade stainless steel. Um, and <laughs> it, 
it's I I did I, I didn't really like the shininess of the cl this clip. It's not bad. I mean, it's it's clearly, and I'll show you in pocket, um, very low profile. You know, I love the low profile um, kind of look. And here, let's just show you in in the jeans real quick, just to give you an idea. I mean, look at that. Nobody even just notices that. But I did want to take off some of the shine, and so I tried to acid etch this, uh, and I had it in for like thirty minutes, um, and it didn't change one bit. So this stuff, this marine gre marine grade steel, is gonna last forever. I mean, if it lasts through that acid etching that, like I did, um, oh, I don't know. Let's see on on you know this this blade. It took like 10 minutes to do that. <laughs> so it's quite impressive. Uh, but just to show you in the pocket, um, in comparison to say, oh, one of my favorites is the Benchmade Bug Out with this really um, small clip here, um, obviously. But I mean, look at that. It's just super low profile. God, I love that. Um, anyway, I could talk about that forever. So there's that in the pocket as far as the clip and the low profile part of that. Um, what else can I tell you about the EDC? I am really loving this uh, in the pocket. It feels quite light. There's a little bit of uh, offset on the clip here. So it really rides in your pocket really well. Um, I told you this is going to go long. So conclusions. Would I purchase this? Uh, would I purchase or pass on this knife? Uh, I can't recommend this knife enough. Um, everything on it is done so well. Here's the four holes for Quiet Carry, by the way, just kind of their low profile branding. It's on all their knives. I love that. Um, the chamfering here is really good. Uh, the lockup was really good on this uh, knife. Um, I did loosen it up a bit. In fact, here, let me just show you. Um, it's not quite, I didn't, I don't like them. Uh, freely dropping, to be honest, because uh, for frame locks and liner locks, I don't want it to fall on my, my thumb. In fact, I cut my thumb already um, by messing around with this. So this is super smooth though. Um, and it, it flies out pretty well and that'll, that'll work out as well. So the detent, the ceramic ball interior, I really like that there's no, um, you know, it's just totally smooth. I mean, look at this, whoever designed this did just an amazing job, uh, really good chamfering all around. Um, it doesn't bother me that this is pretty straight here. I love that the knife is, is quite hidden. Uh, this is just like the design of this knife is amazing. Uh, it has ambidextrous thumb studs. One thing that's, uh, you know, better than the Sebenzas in my opinion and left-handed, I have no problem opening or closing it, which I really like in case, you know, I injured my thumb, which I did earlier. Um, and you know, you can close it just fine with the left hand. Uh, it's just really a nice, beautiful knife. Um, I highly rec recommend this. They don't uh, come in stock very often, so you just kind of have to keep looking and refresh. Uh, I'm looking forward to buying more from Quiet Carry, to be perfectly honest. I think they've done an amazing job here. And hopefully you found this valuable, and stay well, everybody. Mahalo.